Good morning. Welcome to St. John Hill Church. I'm Dave Bittler. I'm the pastor here. If you're visiting with us, we wish you a special welcome this morning and thank you for worshiping with us today. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Even though it's still November, we're uh, already thinking about uh, the Christmas season. As such, there are several new things uh, that are going to happen this morning. If you have a bulletin, um, you'll be in good shape. If you don't have one, uh, you can pick up one in uh, the narthex. Um, it's going to start uh, right after the prelude. As you know, every uh, Advent season, we, we generally light the candles on the Advent wreath, marking the time as we are uh, heading toward Christmas. Um, this year, uh, the choir is going to help us in that, both with uh, singing and readings. If you um, open up your bulletin to the um, about two pages from the back, um, where it says Advent Wreath Lighting, um, again, this will happen right after Elmer plays the prelude this morning. Um, the choir is going to sing, and then in the middle of their... Uh, song, uh, there's going to be a responsive narration. The words are listed there in the bulletin. Okay. And then uh, you want to pay attention to what the choir sings right before that because then they're going to ask you to join in singing with them and the music for that is uh, on the uh, opposing page. So the choir is going to sing, we'll do the responsive narration, and uh, we will join them in the last uh, uh, chorus of that song. So that's going to come up right after the, um, the prelude this morning. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, the poinsettia order forms are, are in your bulletin. Uh, these need to be turned in by next Sunday, December 5th. So next Sunday, um, please have these uh, ready. Also, uh, for Advent, um, the next couple of weeks, uh, the sermon material is going to be taken from this great little book called Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. Um, there are copies on the back table in the narthex. Um, please feel free to take one per family. Um, if there's any left at Christmas Eve, um, you, you're welcome to take uh, whatever's left. These were provided to us by the publisher. They, they sent me a box and they said, he said, do with it what you want. Uh, so I said, okay, we're, we're going to use it for Advent. The chapters in here are, are pretty short. They're about eight pages on average. Right? This would be a great Advent devotional to read with you know, your spouse, with your family. It will uh, it'll help challenge maybe some of our misconceptions of what we think about Jesus using the Bible and how Jesus describes himself. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the things that he talks about in this book, but this is where I'm pulling my... Uh, sermon material for the next uh, couple of weeks as we head toward Christmas, but there are copies uh, on the on the back table by the by the front door. Uh, feel free to help yourself with that. There's still also a couple of copies um, in the table uh, over here by the coat rack called Rediscover Church. You're welcome to these as well if uh, if you'd like a copy of that. Um, I told Elmer I said when we do one thing new a week it boggles my mind. We're doing about five different things new this week, so I know I'm going to forget something. I think Dottie had an announcement, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that next week we're going to be having a congregational meeting after worship service um, uh, to approve the 2022 budget. And there are copies of the Narthex if you'd like to take a copy along and look over it before the, the meeting. And also, at that meeting, we're going to vote on a new trustee and hopefully a new consistory member for next year. And Nikki also asked me to make another announcement that the, uh, the offering envelopes for next year are located in the narthex. So you can pick those up, and if you don't have an offering pack um, with your name on it, please let Nikki know and she can make one up for you. So next Sunday, uh, 
We'll have a congregational meeting for uh, our members to vote on the budget and uh, new officers for the next year, which leads me into a good segue that I would probably have forgotten otherwise. Um, if you are a regular attender here but not a member and you, you're thinking about maybe placing membership, I would invite you to um, uh, just reach out to me, send me an email, call me on the phone. Uh, we can talk about what that means. Uh, we're hoping that on Palm Sunday of 2022, we can do a uh, new membership induction in mass. So if you're like, I don't want to be standing up in front all by myself, we're going to have, hopefully have a, a big group that Sunday, so you'll blend in with the crowd. It won't be quite as, uh, um, you know, standout-ish uh, if you'd like. But if you are interested in that, um, that does give you voting rights on, you know, things like the budget and uh, members and things like that, and it's an important part uh, of what we do here. So if you're not a member, and I will tell you right now, I have no idea if you are or not. Um, I don't, it's not something I look at, but it is something for our organization um, uh, that we, we do need to make sure that we're at least abiding by our bylaws and things like that. So if you would like to be a part of that, um, we would love to talk with you about what that means in the process uh, going forward and the benefits thereof. Um, if not, you know, and you just want to keep coming and, you know, enjoy fellowshipping with us, that's fine too. Um, like I said, I don't keep up with who's on the list and who's not on the list. Um, if you're here, uh, I just assume you're on my list. So uh, that's how we, we go from there. But for the, for the organizational purposes, uh, um, membership is required for voting, um, and, and we do want to uh, allow you that opportunity if you would like to join with us in those endeavors. Are there any other announcements? Yes, I have. All right, somebody else. Wait. Plug for in two weeks, December the 12th. The choir and guests are presenting the cantata, The Heart of Christmas, uh, on, during our worship service. So invite your friends and neighbors, and you can bring your enemies too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Christmas is a good time for that. Um, so that would be in two weeks on December the 12th. Well, it will be the, the choir will be presenting uh, the cantata, The Heart of Christmas. Uh, on the following Sunday, uh, December 19th, we'll be having our children's program during uh, worship, so you'll want to bring your uh, friends and neighbors for that one uh, as well. Any other announcements? Yes, ma'am. Yes, next Saturday, uh, if you would like to help... Um, bring this place to life for Christmas. Uh, we would love your help for that. Uh, the sanctuary goes under a pretty good transformation. Uh, I know, I don't know what size tree they're planning on picking up this year, but if it was anything like last year, uh, some help will be needed for that too. Um, all I know is I didn't have a lot of room to roam right behind me because there was a tree there. Um, but uh, that'll be next, what time, Ronnie? One o'clock? All right. So you can even sleep in uh, and, and then come and join us at, at one o'clock. But now, is that, is that a hard one o'clock or is that a Hill Church one o'clock, which I know, you know, we say times here, but somebody's going to show up at 11 and start working, and when we show up at one, it's all going to be done anyway. Um, I'm trying not to look at anybody in particular because people can be like, um, but I know that happens. So it's one o'clock. But if you show up early, somebody's probably going to be here working anyway. Um, but if you show up at 1 o'clock, you may get here and find that everything's done. So you can be like, hey, I showed up to help, but it was already done. Um, I don't know. I can't remember how we did it last year. So uh, Anything else? All right, well, let's take a few moments and prepare our hearts for worship as we hear the prelude.
a savior, the Messiah is promised. The birth of the child is prophesied in God's word. O Lord, you are our hope. For what was written in former days was written for our instruction, that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. O Lord, you are our hope. Our hearts long for the hope that your arrival will bring. O Lord, you are our hope. God's promises are true. We await the birth of Christ, the promised child, the Savior of the world. Hope is coming soon. O Lord, you are our hope. Would you stand as we sing our opening hymn, This Is My Father's World, it's number 991 in your hymnal. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for the world that you create and our place in it. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ who makes all things new, even us. 
Lord, we come to sing of your grace and your mercy, your power and strength this morning. Would your spirit be with us to help us embody our praise, to perfect it in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I ask that you take your bulletin as we come to a time of confession. We will pray together the prayer of confession that's found in your bulletin. We'll pray that in unison. It will also be on the wall behind me. Then we'll take a few moments in silent prayer to confess our own personal sins to the Lord. I'll then close us in in prayer and offer us some words of assurance. So would you join me as we pray the prayer that's found in your bulletin. We are told to be on guard, to be prepared for your coming. We confess, merciful God, that too often we are lazy and do not trouble ourselves with the prayerful Sabbath that is required on this Advent prayer. To be aware of your presence in our lives. Make us to know your ways, O Lord. Teach us your paths and lead us in your truth. This we pray in your holy and merciful name. Amen. Let's take a few moments to pray silently to the Lord. Most merciful God, we come before you as your people, gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, confessing our sin before you, both our corporate sin and our own personal sin, seeking forgiveness by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, would you take our sin from us, the guilt that we carry, would you place that on Jesus Christ? And give us his righteousness, as your word promises. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Here are these words from Paul's letter to the church of the Ephesians in chapter 2. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Would you join us as we sing our response of praise, Emmanuel. It's number 164 in your hymnal or the words will be on the wall. prepare to worship our Lord with the giving of our tithes and offerings. I'll ask our ushers to come forward.
gracious God, we come before you to thank you for all that you have given us. We extend that thanks by returning a portion of what you have blessed us with to you, that you would bless this and use it for the work of your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles and would like to follow along this morning, I would invite you not to turn to the book of Genesis, but to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. Let us hear the word of God to us this morning. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we come before your word this morning with humble and obedient hearts. Father, would you send your spirit to help us to be our teacher, to write these words on our hearts, that we might know you more, that we might love you more, that we might serve you more. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever met anybody famous? I mean, like, somebody people would know, not just locally famous. When I was 14, I thought I was pretty smart. So I sent in a letter to Jeopardy. I wanted to try out for Teen Jeopardy. And I didn't get a response. So the next year, when the tournament came open, I sent in a letter to try out for Teen Jeopardy. And the second year, I got a response. The response was, congratulations, you need to come to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and take a test. Now, from Tioga County to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, back in the late 1980s was not an easy trip to make. As Tioga County is one of those places that you just can't get to from here, and to get to Pittsburgh was, at that time, about a six-hour trip. But my parents agreed to take me. And so we went down, we, I think we spent the night at the hotel, I think it was the It was the Hilton or the Sheraton. It was probably at the time one of the nicest hotels I'd ever ever been in. And, you know, we go down and we're trying to find the place where we need to check in. And all of a sudden, I start noticing Hollywood people walking by me. Back in the time, my parents and I, we we used to watch L.A. Law. And I don't know if anybody remembers that show. It was 
was a big show back in the, in the 80s, uh, but uh, one of the lawyers from the show, Blair Underwood, walked right by me, and it wasn't until after he was by me that I, somebody said, hey, that was, that was Blair Underwood. I was like, oh, I missed my chance. So we go into this room. There's, I don't know, 50 or 100 of us trying out at the same time, and, and we, we, we sit in this room. We're sitting, I don't know, probably about five to a table, 20 tables in this room, and it was a 50-question test that was done on TV. And it, would, it happened just like you see on the Jeopardy game show. It would show you a category, it would show you the clue, and you would hear Alex's voice reading the clue, and then as soon as he was done reading, you had 10 seconds to write down the answer. Now, you didn't have to phrase it in the form of a question, you just had to write down the key words, and then it was on to the next one. So there was no going back, and you had to get, you had to get them going. And, um, and it was hard. Um, and when it was done, and while they were checking the answers, lo and behold, Alex Trebek himself comes into the room. And he talked with us for probably a good half an hour. And when I tell people that story that I got to meet Alex Trebek, the first question that most people ask is, what was he like? We see him on TV, and God rest his soul, he was on TV for a long time. I mean, he was, on, he was hosting game shows well before Jeopardy. Um, people say, what was he like? And if you want to know, I'll tell you some other time. But, um, but I got to meet somebody famous. I even got to ask him a question, and I got a one-word answer. Um, so... Uh, but I got a sense, because I was in the room with him, because I saw how he interacted with me and other people, I got a sense as to what he was truly like. Not what you see on TV, but what he was really like as a person. Just a little bit of a sense. The question is, as we come to the first Sunday in Advent, how well do we know Jesus? How well do we know what he's really like? Well, the only way to tell, we know that Scripture tells us of what he did and what other people did in response to what he did. But to find out what he was truly like, we come to passages like this. One of the few times where Jesus actually kind of removes the veil and he tells us what he is like, what is really at his heart. Because he says in verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Now, I don't know about you, but if I asked you to describe me from what you've known of me over the past year, I doubt many of you would say, oh, our pastor, he's gentle. He's a lowly of heart person. Would anybody say that about you? I don't say that to shame you, because I know it's probably not always true of me. I wish it were true of me. But that's who Jesus was. A person uh, who was gentle and lowly of heart. Well, what does that mean? mean, and how does that affect what we would naturally think about Jesus? Because it's not like we can say that that's true of Jesus toward everyone. Because if we read just, you know, in the passage immediately before what we read this morning, 
he speaks of, but I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for you. So here he comes. On one hand, he's speaking judgment toward some. But verse 25, he says, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. See, back in Jesus' day, it wasn't so much that children should be seen and not heard. Anybody grow up here, your parents saying that? Now, in Jesus' day, children should be not seen and definitely not heard. Children were generally considered lower than slaves. Slaves at least had a use within the family in the house. They had a job to do. Children didn't, weren't worth a whole lot in the daily economy of life. And so when the little children wanted to come to see Jesus, the disciples just did what was natural in you know, the, the modern societal thing. Kids, get out of here. You, know, you, you shouldn't be here. Don't bother the master. And what does Jesus do? He gets down on his hands and knees. He said, let the children come to me. He said, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, then you must come as little children. And here he says something very similar. He says, I thank you, God, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding. Well, who are the, the wise and the understanding in Jesus' day? They were actually the conservative religious folks who thought they understood who God was, and they, who thought they could, they could please God by their outwardly righteous actions. I mean, they weren't content just to obey the law of God. They took the law of God, and then they, they, they raised it. They, okay, well, if, you know, if I'm not supposed to do this, well, then I'm not going to do this plus, or anything even close to that, so I'm going to go above this, and that's going to show God how holy I am. They thought they had God's will and God's heart figured out. And they were proud of it. You know, I can puff out my chest and I am, I am righteous. I am a pious, holy person. And I pray Ten times a day, and I tithe on everything I get, and I, you know, I'm not like these other people. God, I thank you that I'm not like them. You know, that I have a righteousness in and of myself. And Jesus says, God, I thank you that you have actually hidden your will from those who would be wise in their own eyes and that you have revealed them to little children. Little children who are, have no value, have, would be the oppressed ones of society. And they knew it, right? The children of that day knew that they weren't welcome by the adults. They knew that they were supposed to be off doing their own thing, and not getting in the way. Jesus says, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Jesus said, if you want to know the Father, if you want to know what God is like, then you need to get to know me. And what am I like? 
He says, I'll tell you. And he offers an invitation. Well, who gets the invitation? You ever remember that in school? You know, you knew that you know, the most popular kid in class was having a birthday party. And you were going to wonder if you were going to be on the invite list or not. Oftentimes I was not. Right? Not always, but I got to go to a few. But, but most of the time I was not on the, on, the, on the list. Who gets the invitation? Jesus says, come to me all who are labor, all who labor and are heavy laden. Is that you? Would you get an invite? See, this is kind of what we're, we're, we're seeing the opposing side. You can be wise and understanding, or you can be one who labors and is heavy laden. One who knows that there is something weighing you down. See, that's who Jesus is looking for. That's who Jesus wants to reveal himself to. Are those who know, I don't have the wisdom and understanding within myself. but I know that there is something in this world that is keeping me down. I know that in here. I may not let it show out here, but boy, do I know it here. I feel it. And even if you don't know what that's called, it's called sin. It's what weighs us down. It's what op truly oppresses us. It comes in lots of different forms. And the wise and the understanding think that they've got it licked. They think that, well, I figured out this sin thing. I know how to stay away from it. I've I've set all these proper standards so that my, my actions can never be impugned. And by golly, if you want to know how good I am, just ask me and I'll tell you. That's the wise and the understanding. I've got it figured out. But you see, Jesus says, if if that's you, then really God has hidden something from you. He's allowed you to, in judgment, to live in this own, your own self-delusion. But Jesus says, if you want to know me, you can come if you will admit that you are labored and heavy laden. That the yoke of sin that is on your shoulders... is wearing you down, and you know it. And you want to be free of it, but you don't know how. Because what does Jesus say? He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, if you've ever used a yoke, you know that what it's designed to do is to allow two animals, two beasts of burden, you know, in Jesus' day it was usually oxen, to work as one. But the animals don't intrinsically know how to work together. So often what they would do is they would take an older, experienced ox and put him with a younger, smaller one so that the, the bigger one would take the brunt of the weight, but the, the, the smaller, the younger one 
would, would have to bear some of it, and he would learn what to do from the other one. So he's still got a pole, but he's got training that has to happen in the process. So what does Jesus say? If you are burdened, if you labor and are, are heavy laden, come to me. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Jesus says, if you understand your burden, if you understand the weight of sin that is wearing you down, I have good news for you. I will show you how to get out from underneath that burden. And the way that you get out from underneath that burden is that you actually come under my yoke. Because my yoke is easy and the burden is light. Do we know why that's true? Because Jesus takes all of the weight of the yoke on himself so that all we have to do is walk beside him and he will show us himself and in knowing himself knowing who Jesus truly is can we understand how to get out of the burden of sin because he said, I am gentle and lowly of heart. I, if you understand that you need a gentle Savior, Jesus said, I'm the one for you. If you think that you've got it all figured out, that you are wise and understanding, Jesus says, there's not much hope for you. You can't come to me if you are wise and understanding because you think it's all about you. You think you can carry your own weight. You think you can pull the yoke by yourself. Jesus says you're, you're, you're going to run yourself into the ground, literally, trying to do that. But Jesus, who he truly is toward the penitent, toward those who feel oppressed by the weight of sin, who know that there are things in their lives that weigh me down. Jesus said, I will take that from you, and I will give you something that is easy, and I will give you rest. This Advent season, let us be people who seek the rest of Jesus. Let's lay aside the things that would weigh us down. Let us not be wise in our own eyes thinking, oh, I've got this whole Jesus thing figured out. That's why I want you to take a copy of this book. Especially if you think you got him figured out. Because I have a feeling this book, are gonna, if you read it carefully and slowly, you're going to be like, I didn't know Jesus was like that. I didn't know Jesus would do that for me. Maybe we build up some misconceptions about who Jesus is and what he came to do. Especially if we think we've got him all figured out. Maybe we will find that we are laboring under a yoke that we can't continue to pull. Maybe we will find that we are heavy laden. Maybe we will find that we can truly come to Jesus, the one who came as a baby, has promised to give us rest. I don't know about you, but rest for me is a good thing. When the holidays get real busy, 
we got to go here, we got to go there, we got this going on, we got that going on. I mean, you heard how many announcements we had going on of things coming up in the next couple of weeks. There's plenty to do to keep us busy. Let's not get so busy that we forget to rest. To fly to Jesus and say, Jesus, I am burdened. Take my burden from me. See, that's what the table is about for us. This table, when we, when we come to this table and we partake of what's here, we are saying, Jesus, I am burdened, and I want you to take that burden from me, and I want to take your yoke on myself. I want you to give me your yoke. I want you to give me your rest. When we take the body and the blood of Jesus, that's what we, we declare with our body, that I can't do it on my own. I don't have the strength to run the race of having a righteousness of my own because it will never be enough. And the weight of sin against the weight of my own personal righteousness, sin is always going to win. And it's going to drive me into the ground. It's an unforgiving yoke. But Jesus says, if you come to me, take my yoke, take my body and my blood for yourself. I will give you rest. So friends, that's what we come to. As we come to the table, as we come to the season of Advent, where we look forward to the coming and celebrate the coming of Christ, the one who comes to give us rest. Do you want to sign up for rest? Or would you rather keep working yourself into the ground? That's the choice that Jesus offers. That's the choice of the table for us. We can find rest, or we can keep working ourselves to death, seeking our own righteousness. The table is open for those who would seek rest. And as we come to rest in the power of Jesus Christ this morning, let's affirm together what we believe as we recite together the Apostles' Creed. It's found in your bulletin, also be on the wall behind me. Let's affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you have come to him saying, Jesus, I am weary and heavy laden. I want your rest. If that is you, if you have put your life in the hands of Jesus, then this table is open for you. If you are one who is still believing that you are wise in your own eyes, if you are one who is trusting in your own righteousness, working 
with the weight of sin on your shoulders and you haven't put your faith in what this table represents, that I would invite you to not participate at this time. I wouldn't want you declaring with your actions something that is not true in your heart and would so invite God's judgment upon you. So with that, let us go before the table and would you join me in our responsive prayer of thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. Let's sing together the hymn. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your table this morning in obedience to your command, seeking your rest. Father, would you add your blessing to these common elements before us this morning, that you would set them apart from their common purpose to this special purpose for which you have commanded and ordained us to follow. We ask your blessing upon this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord, but I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. the body of Christ, which was broken for you. If you take your communion cup and pull back on just the very thin layer of cellophane that's on the top, it will reveal the bread. The body of Christ, which was broken for you and for your rest, take and eat with thanksgiving. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If you take and pull back on the larger tab, it will open the cup. The blood of Christ which was shed for you and for your rest. Take and drink. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this table, for the gift of Jesus Christ, and the rest that he provides. Father, would you help us to live in the rest and the grace of that you provide us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
as we come to our Lord in prayer this morning, are there any praises or prayer requests that we can bring before the family this morning? All right, well, let's take these and any unspoken requests that you have before our Lord this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Lord, we thank you for his gentleness toward us. Lord, we thank you for the rest that he gives us. And Lord, we come before you this morning with the concerns of many of our friends and family here. Lord, many who, because of illness and sickness, Lord, are having trouble finding rest today. Lord, would you bring healing to their bodies? Lord, would you give them the presence and the rest of Jesus to sustain them? Father, would you hear the unspoken prayers and concerns of our hearts this morning? Father, would you give us your rest and your peace and your encouragement and, Lord, the grace to help, to encourage, to be your hands and feet in this world. Father, may the, the words that you have spoken to us today Fill us with the grace to take into the world, to be your salt and light. Help us, O oh Lord, by the grace of Jesus. We ask this in his name, who taught his disciples and so us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand with me for our closing hymn? It is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. The, the music for it can be found uh, on the uh, next to last page uh, of your bulletin. <laughs>
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you now and forever. Amen.